the word buddha originally means the enlightened one operation smiling buddha was the code name of india's first nuclear bomb test conducted on 18th may 1974 48 years later buddha is smiling again and the reason is not merely nukes but cultural too india has finally learned to use buddha to its advantage few weeks ago indian defense minister mentioned the illegal occupation of pakistan occupied kashmir by pakistan of course ye baat sach hai ki yahan tak हमारी न्यूक्लियर पॉलिसी का सवाल है उसमें नो फर्स्ट यूज कि आज तक हमारी पॉलिसी यही है अब भविष्य में क्या होगा यह सब परिस्थितियों पर निर्भर करता है वंस अगेन सिग्नलिंग दैट इंडिया इज रिकंसिडरिंग इट्स डॉक्ट्रिन्स न्यूक्लियर एंड अदरवाइज हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अ न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ रेजिडेंट न्यूज टूडे विल हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ इंडिया इज फ्लेक्सिंग इट्स न्यूक्लियर मसल्स एंड यूजिंग इट्स सॉफ्ट पार्ट टू स्ले द एनिमीज Do not forget to support our channel by liking and sharing our content and also do post your feedback in the comment section. So let us help you understand nuclear buddha and India's burgeoning nuclear arsenal. India's first nuclear test was conducted in Rajasthan's Pokhran on May 18, 1974 on the occasion of Buddha Jayanti which marks the birth of Lord Gautam Buddha. Hence it was called Operation Smiling Buddha. according to a recent report by sipri which is stockholm international peace research institute india has about 116 nuclear heads as on january 2022 the report claims both india and pakistan appear to be expanding their nuclear arsenals and that both the countries have introduced and continue to develop new nuclear delivery systems the report also mentioned that china is in the middle of a substantial expansion of its nuclear arsenal which satellite images indicate include the construction of over 300 new missile silos the report comes months after india took a giant nuclear arsenal leap with agni p this medium range nuclear capable ballistic missile successfully completed its second test on december 18 2021 agni p has adopted a new feature called canisterization making it an unpredictable strategic threat to india's enemies in layman's language canisterization means the warhead can be permanently mated with a missile which is otherwise installed only prior to the launch of missile so what happens if warhead is permanently mated with the missile doing so would keep india's enemy guessing as to at what stage during a crisis or war would india push its nuclear tab this in turn would mean that a country like pakistan will also have to keep itself nuclear ready as with widespread canisterization of arm missiles of india would shorten the warning time with its economy on crutches pakistan financially and technologically is not capable of keeping its nuclear warheads in a ready to launch position india's capability to keep its nuclear capable missiles in ready to launch position is a sign of india's strategic forces commands increased emphasis on readiness this is why sipri was not wrong in concluding that india is developing new types of delivery systems but what really keeps pakistan and china on their edge is india's changing stance on nfu policy well the policy is no first use of nuclear weapon nfu policy in simplest of terms if i were to explain to you means that at any stage of a crisis india will not push its nuclear tabs unless the enemy uses a nuke on india and if that happens god forbid india will adopt mad a mutually assured destruction policy which means enemy will not be spared even if it means jeopardizing india's safety in 2019 india's defense minister rajnath singh had opined that it is time for india to rethink on no first use of nuclear weapon policy this had sent across a shock wave all the doctrines need periodic reviews and india's case is no exception so will india switch to a more aggressive nuclear policy only time will tell So now let me help you understand how Buddhism has become a new frontier of sorts between India and China. Since some time China has been claiming Buddhism to be an ancient Chinese religion while simultaneously making an effort to wiping out Lord Gautam Buddha's connection to India. 
Hence, it has become important for India to use Buddhism as a cultural soft power and counter Chinese propaganda on Buddhism. Through Buddhism, China is increasing its sphere of influence in nearby regions by financing powerful Buddhist organization. This, the Chinese Communist Party assumes, would help negating any ill feeling of Buddhist followers towards Chinese occupation of Tibet, which had led to the present Dalai Lama shifting his base to India. Now, for over a decade, China has been organizing international Buddhist gatherings. So, India also decided to hold similar international Buddhist confederations. And apparently, the gatherings held by India have now become largest Buddhist gatherings ever since Emperor Ashoka's era. In the month of May this year, India opened Buddhist center with much pomp and splendor in Lumbini, Nepal, under Indian PM Modi. After Modi government took over in 2014, Indian government has been making conscious efforts to use Buddhism as an element of its bilateral and diplomatic approach, especially in case of Japan and Mongolia. In June this year, Union Minister Kiran Riju, along with 25 member delegation, went to Mongolia with four holy relics of Lord Buddha. Taking the relics to Mongolia is an effort to revive the relations with the countries like Mongolia, with whom India has been sharing cultural and spiritual ties since centuries. What is common in Nepal, Japan and Mongolia is not just Buddhism, but also the fact that they are China's neighbors who are aware of China's shrewd ways of working. For example, the Confucius Institute and Cultural Center, the Progressive New Republic magazine and the Conservative National Association of Scholars, NAS, have proven that Confucius Institute run by China are not innocuous cultural centers offering Chinese language instruction. In fact, they have been part of China's thousand grain of sand spying strategy. The Trump administration in 2020 had called Confucius centers as a Trojan horse, an entity in advancing Beijing's global propaganda under the garb of an education and cultural institute. Some time ago, Chinese cultural centers had dropped their roots in India to the Hanban website, list three Confucius institutes in India, and these are University of Mumbai, Velour Institute of Technology, and Lovely Professional University. And there are, of course, School of Chinese Language in Kolkata, Bharatiyar University, and K.R. Mangalam University. The initial assessment by security agencies in the year 2020 revealed that many education institutions entered into agreements with universities in China without mandatory approvals from the central government. Two Confucius institutes associated with Mumbai University and Kolkata School of Chinese Language faced the most scrutiny as they were involved in extensive student exchange programs. It is very exhilarating to see that Indian government is cracking its whip on such entities. India is now home to Tibetan Buddhism. Some time ago, a video of Indian army had gone viral where an Indian soldier was seen scolding a Chinese soldier who was apparently originally from Tibet for working under PLA, which is known to carry out atrocities against Tibetan Buddhism. PLA has now been recruiting locals along the LAC and giving them attractive packages in the Chinese army. Accordingly, India too has now changed its approach towards Tibetan Buddhism. Indian PM wishing Dalai Lama regularly on special occasions has put Chinese Premier Xi Jinping on tenterhooks and it forced him to visit Tibet this year for the first time in almost 10 years. His last official visit to Tibet was in 2011. Beyond this, Indian Army is also taking special efforts to understand Tibetan Buddhism. In a first, Indian Army officers can now undertake a course in Tibetology, which will help them bond better with the Tibetan community in border areas. Such confidence-building measures by military and government reassures 100,000 strong Tibetan community that India is their home. Few years ago, I had an interaction with a Chinese national on an international forum. The Chinese national was very confident that Gautam Buddha had no connection with India. That made me realize the level of propaganda run by Communist Party within China. Today, India has finally learned to not just thrive but flourish despite being surrounded by belligerent neighbors like China. Buddha is now not just associated with Buddhism but also nukes. 
the enlightened buddha of bodh gaya would be smiling to see the changes in his teachings over the ages and like what is commonly believed buddha had readied his followers to fight a war to strive he had said you yourself must strive the buddha's only point the way hope you enjoyed the video do give us your feedback in the comment section like share and subscribe jai hind jai bharat